Hey, staff students, we're going to wrap up this section on sampling and surveys by talking about some errors in surveys. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, this is one of my favorite Calvin and Hobbes cartoons. You can see that um, he's filling out the survey for Chewing Magazine. And so, you know, he's messing with the data. Uh, he's responding, and we'll talk about what type of error this is. The use of bad sampling methods often leads to bias. Researchers can avoid these methods by using random sampling to choose their samples, uh, but you're also going to have other problems in conducting the sample surveys that are more difficult to avoid. So sometimes it's the fault of the people conducting the sampling. Uh, other times it's, you know, they did everything possibly good that they could have and things can still go wrong. So let's talk about what can go wrong. One thing that can happen is under coverage, okay? Uh, this vocabulary term means uh, that some members of the population are less likely to be chosen or they cannot be chosen in a sample, uh, right? If you are identifying people in your population but you're just kind of not really going to reach them um, or like if you're trying to reach them but they cannot be, uh, or no, not that, like, yeah, they're just, they can't be chosen in the sample. Uh, an example would be, you know, sending out an email survey to everyone in the country. Well, not everyone has email, so you're including or purposefully discluding members of the population that do not have email, which maybe are different than people who do. Another way that sample surveys can go wrong is non-response. Okay, non-response occurs when an individual chosen for the sample cannot be contacted or they refuse to participate. Okay, uh, this can happen, you know, again, if you sent out those emails, well, they don't have to respond to the email, right, if you randomly chose them. Uh, or maybe if it's at school and you say, hey, like, fill out this Google form, and you email it out to the people that you want, and you did a simple random sample and everything's great, but they don't want to participate, that's non-response. That's, that's on the individuals, that's not on the samplers. Another one that can occur is response bias, right? Uh, this occurs when there is a systematic PAMP pattern of inaccurate answers to a survey question. Uh, this could arise from untruthful answers or per poorly worded questions. Uh, so for example, if you were to ask somebody, have you visited the dentist in the last six months? Well, maybe the person doesn't want you to think that they're gross and they're still going to be like, yeah, of course I have, but that might be a lie. Or, you know, do you believe that men and women should have equal rights? Maybe they feel pressured to say yes, because that's the socially acceptable thing to do, but maybe they'll answer not, in a way that's not true for them. Uh, you need to be careful with uh, the term, or misusing the term voluntary response to explain why certain individuals don't respond in the sample survey. Uh, their belief is that participation in the survey is optional, voluntary, so that anyone can refuse to take part. So what you're actually describing is non-response. So there's a difference. Voluntary response is when, you know, you say, hey, like, respond to this if you want to in a truly, you know, like, hey, call in and give your answer or, you know, speak up if you want to say something versus if you've selected your people in a, you know, clearly random sample way, but they're just not responding, that's non-response. Uh, something that can also contribute to your response bias is if your wording of the question is not good, right? Uh, wording of the question is going to be one of the most important influences on the answers that are given to a sample survey. So these kind of four things to consider. Under coverage, uh, non-response, response bias, as well as wording of the question. So these are some things that can go wrong. Let's go through an example or two together. Each of the following is a source of error in a sample survey. We want to describe the error or the bias and then explain the answer. So the telephone directory is used as a sampling frame. A sampling frame is the way of saying like, okay, here's the population that I'm focusing on. So what could be the problem with using the telephone directory as a sampling frame? Well, this is on the person that's doing the sampling, right? This is a sampling error. This is going to result in under coverage because there are going to be some people that aren't listed in the phone book, right? Maybe those people that don't have a phone or maybe they only have a cell phone, they're not going to have the opportunity to be chosen. Uh, back in the day when phone books were really popular, um, 
my parents never had their number listed in the phone book. And so they wouldn't have been able to be involved in this survey because the telephone directory didn't include them. So this is a problem on the part of the person doing the sampling. So that's why it's called a sampling error. Uh, the person cannot be contacted in five calls. Well, this is going to be a non-sampling error. It's not your fault that they can't be contacted, right? This is non-response bias. This did not occur because of the way that the sample was chosen, but rather was an effect um, of the way that the survey was administered. Okay, so this is just, this happens sometimes. You can do everything you want to and you can't contact them, then that's non-response bias. Uh, the interviewers choose people walking by on the sidewalk to interview. Okay, this is a major problem in the sampling method because this is an example of convenient sampling. Who you find will depend on where you're standing, right? Uh, this has to do with how you choose your sample. So sam convenient sampling as well as voluntary or voluntary response sampling are not good ways to create a sample. If all of these vocab words kind of get mushed all up in your brain between like, oh, is this non-response? Is this response? Is this under coverage? You're better off just explaining what's happening if you can't remember the exact term. Now, should you work on remembering the exact terms? Of course, uh, but at least remembering how to describe them is better. Let's look at another example. A survey paid for by makers of disposable diapers found that 84% of the sample opposed banning disposable diapers. Here was the question. It is estimated that disposable diapers account for less than 2% of the trash in today's landfills. In contrast, beverage containers, third-class mail, and yard waste are estimated to account for about 21% of the trash in landfills. Given this, in your opinion, would it be fair to ban disposable diapers? Huh, and it's a wonder that 84% said, no, we shouldn't ban disposable diapers based on what they said. So we're going to explain how the wording of the question could result in the bias. Also making sure to specify the direction of the bias. Well, by making it sound like disposable diapers are not a huge problem in the landfill, this question is going to result in fewer people suggesting that we should ban them. The author of the question is highlighting several other items that take up more space, which makes it look like disposable di diapers are really not a problem. Therefore, the findings are going to be an underestimate of the true proportion of people who think disposable diapers should be banned. Notice how I said it was, you know, fewer people suggested it. It's an underestimate. Um, talked about how the wording kind of made it misleading, which made us be like, oh, well, it's not that bad. So why would you ban it if it's not a huge problem? This is how wording of your question can really affect uh, your results. This is also another reason why if you're, you know, reading survey results or like a, you know, flashy title in a headline news to really question, be like, huh, I wonder how they worded it or how the data was gathered, right? If this was, you know, a voluntary response, um, people that feel strongly are probably going to respond, but if they don't, maybe they didn't respond because it's not a huge concern to them. So these are things to think about as a human uh, when you're reading statistical findings. All right, we are at the end of our section. These are the learning targets uh, that we have covered. If you need more practice, check out your textbook. There's some really great problems in there. Odd answers are in the book, and we will do much more practice together in class. Thanks, guys. Hope you're doing well.